Hey everybody, NFL broadcaster with a new podcast. I've got the Sports Palace here. He's going to join us on the podcast today. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, no problem. Great to be here. Um, so I just really wanted to talk about... Uh, so sorry. Just got like completely mind blocked there. Are you good? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so I really just wanted to talk about uh, George Kittle's resetting the tight end market. Oh, I've sure, been seeing yeah. all these these reports coming out about how it's going to be like some revolutionary deal. And I really just wanted to talk about where do you think that deal is going to land? Um, like, I think it's going to be somewhere between to 12 million. But like, really, there's no telling. We've never seen a, a tight end like this before. Um, yeah, I haven't even looked at the like what tight ends would really make on the like an average salary base for them. Um, but I know that he's looking to be the highest paid tight end and that that's probably going to be a record deal for tight ends. But I would have to look to and, see what they're making now. Yeah, the the record deal for tight ends was um, was Jimmy Graham, I think, six years ago. Yeah, um, yeah uh, he made about $10 million a year, and that's the record deal. Um, like George Kittle is a completely different player. He's like a wide receiver. He can play out of the slot and match up against cornerbacks. It's like Randy Moss on the lining up across from you, except it's it's tight end who can also block like he's Jason Peters. Yeah. But really, it's just it, it's really just interesting to watch. And um, again, I think he could very well get another route, and he could end up having like every tight end being overvalued soon just completely actually change the market and the opinion people have on tight ends like how they value them to me that's the thing about like athletes now i feel like as time is going on and you know it's 2020 now and like i feel like these people coming out of like high school and college they're just advanced like genetically like <laughs> it's yeah, they, like they can't be categorized like, by a position yeah um like, I, i've had arguments with people online and try to tell me that a tight end's like a glorified left tackle or like you only draft them to catch the possession balls, the three three yard check downs that they just fall to the ground right after. Um and it's just not like that anymore. You have guys like Kelsey, you have guys like Ertz, you have guys like um I'm just trying to think of who else. Well Kittle of course. Uh Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry, uh, Austin Hooper, kinds Hooper. of guys like that. Um Mark Andrews, all those kind of guys. And they're all playing the tight end different all playing position in a completely different way. The same position, but it's all so versatile because it's such like a undefined position. Anybody can play tight end as long as they're big and they have any kind of skill set. Pretty much, yeah. You can have like a you know, basketball players. A lot of former basketball players are in the NFL or you know, college basketball players are in the in the NFL now. And um yeah, tight end is definitely one of the more the more versatile positions for them. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, I'm going to stop sharing my screen there. Oops. Um, yeah, it's like even you see it. I don't want to change the subject to quarterbacks, but like even just quarterbacks just and wide receivers, any position now, it's just you got these magnificent athletes coming out of college, and it's almost uncomparable to past players, like past quarterbacks, and it's hard to compare like, oh, this is the quarter greatest quarterback ever because now it's like, People, they're just different. They're diff differently built than they yeah. were, you know, twenty years ago, thirty years ago. And it really is like that. Um, it is. And continuing off, you said like twenty, thirty years ago, um, it was a different sport completely. It was hand the ball off to your running back and hope that you get it, and then third down, you toss it up and see what happens. Just hope that you can beat the defense. Yeah. And like there were still strategies to it, but. Obviously, there's no algorithm to win, and that's another issue I think that will come out of this Kittle deal is people always try to categorize people. Like they always try to say, well, hypothetically, like Kittle, they would be Kittle and getting this record-breaking deal, and they see like Hunter Henry, who's on the come up. He's going to be a great tight end, mm -hmm. but I don't think he'll ever be on Kittle's level, like not even close. Um, and Teams will see that. They'll see that there's a young tight end who can catch balls, he can block, he's a versatile player, and they will overvalue him. That's what I think is going to start happening to tight ends if Kittle can really prove that he deserves this deal. Yeah, and I think Kittle's out of Iowa, right? 
Um, I believe so. Yes, I believe the, they're like a third string, second or third string quarterback on the 49ers was his quarterback in college. Yeah, and yeah, I remember seeing something like that. I have a lot of family in Iowa, and I know they're big fans of like Kittle and this uh, quarterback on the 49ers. They love the duo, even though Garoppolo is a starter there now. But just getting back to Kittle, he's good. He's really good. But I, my thing is, is like, excuse me, he's not doing anything to me like running routes wise that there's no other tight end in the league can't do. Oh, obviously, um, but it's, it's what he, he does in the best open in every field. Aspect. Yeah, yeah. So once he gets the ball, like there's no telling what he could do. He could break any tackle. Um, I wouldn't trust any player one on one to bring Kittle down. I think that's where really he is the most dangerous. Like, yeah, definitely. It might be hard to get the ball, but just because he's um doesn't have that ability to get open quite yet, he still has it. But it's not uh, mind blowing. I don't see him, you know blowing the guy off the line, having 10-yard separation between them. But, you know, even if Kittle has a yard se- separation and goes up for a jump ball, he'll come down with it. And if you give it to him in the open field where he has an opportunity to run 5 yards or 10 yards, he's probably going to make a guy miss and give you 20. So I think that's where most of his value does come from because he does the things like after you get him the ball, like, I'm trying to think of how to he's, explain this. He's, he's like so good at overpowering whoever he's against. Yeah, he I've really like is. Highlights of him of just like pancaking, just blocking, not even like running a route, but he'll just like be blocking for a run play and he just pancakes linemen. And yeah, he does just truly dominate whoever's covering him. He's just a big, he's like a big farm boy from Iowa, you know? Yeah, that's really what it is. Like he just uses um, every single muscle in his body. To make sure that he beats the player across from him. That's what I really love about him. And I do think he does deserve this deal, but I don't really know how high it's uh, going to be, especially and with how unpredictable tight ends are. The 49ers, even honestly, like financially, do they have the cap room for that? Or if you look for a couple years in the future, they're going to have to re sign some players, I'm sure, coming off of rookie contracts. Dre Greenlaw in like a year or two out of Arkansas. Love Dre Greenlaw. I knew he was going to be a stud in the NFL and I'm glad that Niners gave him a chance. Um but like yeah, that's true. They do have a lot of rookies like that. Um yeah. not even just rookies. Like you have guys like um I believe Eric Armstead's rookie contract is almost up if it isn't. Oh yeah, it's um, getting close. Then you know they have a bunch of receivers. They have Debo Samuel, they have uh Dante Pettis and then they let go Marquise Goodwin because of cap space. Which is another issue. Um he then, was old anyways, I think. Wasn't he? I couldn't I couldn't remember if he if they not Brita. Uh I forget who they kept. They traded one of them. They traded one of the running backs or one of Mostert? the running backs. They one traded Mostert, I think. Was it he was really good for a couple game stretch, but I I'm I would be happy if they traded him. It's get what you can in value that he got from those games, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, like <laughs> I can pull up to see what their cap space is. Um, NFL team cap space. Let me see. 2020. And I can pull this up on my screen. Let me display capture. Um, I believe Sherman's contract also ends soon. After. Oh, it's got. It's probably got to be. Wasn't he only on like a two-year deal or something? It's two or three years. I can't remember for sure. Um. So let me share my screen with you, so you can see what I'm looking at here. Can you see it? So we've got. Here's the cap room in 2020. The 49ers are actually pretty high on that list. Yeah, they number. are. They're number 15 in the league with 15.6 mil cap space. I don't know how updated this is, but you got the Browns at the top, which they can do a lot with that. Um, Browns could do a lot, but they've also shown that they don't really know what to do they with don't, cap space. They don't do – like on paper, they look stacked, but they just – do, um, but I've been saying this since the, the Browns first decided to um, – their super team or what they thought was going to be their first NFL mm-hmm. super team. Um, they were making all these crazy free agent signings. They had, I think, Olivier Vernon, Noah Beckham, yeah. uh, 
Green. They had guys like Nick Chubb coming into his own. Um, Drew Mayfield was coming into his own. And they already had uh, Kareem Hunt on the offense as well. But yeah. there was just so many holes on the defense from key positions that aren't this is where you get a big guy. And they lost key players like Christian Kirk and some other players. linebacker, I think. Um, yeah, they lost a lot of people, but they were also in that deep rebuild phase, of course, after that uh, full, was it 0-16, 2017 season? Was it 17? It was either 16 or 17, one of the two. I don't remember um, when, but I know that Baker got drafted in 18, and then he was okay in 18, and then 19, which was last season, they were supposed to be super good, and they just weren't. I could never see, even, even since the draft, I could, I could never see Baker Mayfield being... Um, like an incredible starting quarterback, but yeah. he's just such an all-around player. He is who just loves the game of football. Like he goes out there and he just uses this as a goal set to have as much fun as he can. Yeah, he does, and like I just hope His that he's matured a lot since college. In college, he was just like stupid. You know, he didn't make the best decisions, and yeah, in college, his decision making was a pretty big question. And he hasn't shown that he's going to develop more. Um, as his NFL career continues, but hopefully he can start to overcome those issues. Yeah, and he's not like a... I think people are afraid he's going to be a John, Johnny Menzel version too, but I think he's he's always going to be like one of... He's going to be one of those long, tenured quarterbacks for a team, kind of like I think Sam Darnold's going to be for the Jets, but he's going to take him to the playoffs a couple times, but he's never going to be a Super Bowl quarterback. I don't want to compare yeah, him to Phillip Rivers because that's... Not fair to Philip Rivers, but he's going to be one of those quarterbacks that's with the team for a very long time, but just never does the expected, I guess. I was also thinking um, Baker's kind of like that. Again, Sam Darnold is a great comparison, actually. Um, Philip Rivers is a long-time guy. You know, as a pro comparison, I think that's a great comparison. Um, but really, one of my biggest things is I think Joe Burrow is going to be Baker Mayfield. Do you really? way that um joe burrow's coming in if you take away the national championship if you take away the heisman and you know you just kind of take away that winning mentality it's baker mayfield yeah i guess basically that. the same player. joe burrow has that killer instinct and mm-hmm. that's who i'm i would compare him to right now yeah but really if like in a couple of years joe burrow will be an incredible player just because he has that winning mentality I think he's going to get held back by the Bengals and really trying to transition with such a terrible organization trying to help him develop. And <laughs> yeah, they're so bad. Like it, it's hard to it's hard to say that there is anything good about the Bengals right now because they are in such a bad spot. But uh, Joe, Joe Burrow is definitely a bright spot. Hopefully, he just decides to stay with them because I would really like to see him being a, a franchise quarterback for the yeah. Cincinnati Bengals. That would be interesting. Yeah, I think. Burrow is going to be great. I, it's just hard to tell you. It's you can't really. I think he'll be one of those long tenured quarterbacks. He might take him to the playoffs. I don't think he's going to be winning a Super Bowl anytime soon, just because a quarterback cannot do everything, and you can yeah. see that from players just like Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. Um, I'm sure there's other examples, but like a, one player cannot carry the entire team. They can take him to the playoffs, but they won't win unless you got a full team around you. Yeah, but really, the 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 saying is uh, defense wins championships, often when offense wins games. But like, it's just the full team that wins the championship. You have to have a full team. You can't just have a defense. You can't just have a quarterback. You have to have a full roster. You can't have any holes. It's never the yeah. it's never the rosters with the best players who are going to the Super Bowl. It's the most complete rosters. You really think about it. Um, the Patriots, the pretty much Tom Brady's entire career was never a mind blowing scheme on the stat sheet. Um, never really blew anybody away. Even Tom Brady's number himself, like people say that he got bailed out of Super Bowls and everything. But he he had such a complete team around him. Like he could rely on every single person every year that came down to it, and. It was because of Tom Brady himself, I believe, that that's why every single player, it, like, if you had Tom Brady beside you, you would not fail. You just right. wouldn't. Be. He's, just, he's a winner. He's a winner. Exactly. Um, and I think that's just what some people are able to do, and I don't see Burrow as being one of those guys who can bring their teammates up, really. Um, I think he is a great leader, great winner, and 
he, he's a great football player, but I don't see him being like an all time great quarterback or anything like that. Um, like he's hyped up. But, to well, on the other hand, he has shown flashes of greatness, like real greatness. But of course, he does have those uh, durability questions. Yeah, I mean, and you've only had one great season, really one great season, and that was in college, and you're trying to transition that into the NFL. So yeah, that was you haven't, was you haven't taken a snap in the NFL pro. yet, and I'm not going to call you a great quarterback. Like, I'm going to be honest, I don't even trust Patrick Mahomes yet because, I mean, um, he's a great quarterback, but, like, if you can give me at least three to four consecutive great seasons at quarterback, then I'll trust you. You know, players like Peyton Manning did, uh, Aaron Rodgers year after even year. Even a guy like Philip Lindsay who can come in, and even if you don't have a great season, you know, you come in and the guy's thrown for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns for five, six years straight, then yeah, he's probably a good quarterback, but it's just Philip the Lindsay scheme. Philip Lindsay or Philip Rivers? Uh, Philip Rivers. Oh, <laughs> I was like a running back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, I get, bad. You. Um, I get you. Um, yeah, like even Matt Ryan, you know, you're not going to, he hasn't won a Super Bowl, but like the guy puts up great stats year after year. And if Patrick Mahomes sure. continues to do that, then I'll, I'll trust him, especially after the 2020 season, if it happens. But, um, really, I do believe like Patrick Mahomes was a great quarterback throughout the season. Like that was an, that was an all time season, but I agree with you. He really has a lot to prove. He He's proven a lot. As to being a good quarterback, you know, like if he, if he got yeah. injured towards ACL next year, not that I would ever push that upon him, but it would be like a Derrick Rose situation. It would be, would he have been the greatest mm-hmm. player ever? Because he yeah. does have the potential to do so, um, mm-hmm. looking at his skill set and just his mentality, how he deals with his teammates, everything about him is a, a champion. But just the question of him proving himself and showing that he can get it done. Yeah, I'm just like an old fashioned kind of guy, especially when it comes to like sports. Like, I don't know, like you have to prove yourself to me year after year for me yeah, to like, be think. able to root for you. Like, I don't know, like I just especially when it comes to like the younger people and just coming out of college, I feel like they they let social media get to their heads and they think they're all this Dude. and that. Um, but they're also great athletes. So, yeah, well, even when you look at the game now, just player interviews and how the players are. Um, you look back at the 90s, you look back at the 80s, even the 2000s, all of the Hall of Famers, all the greats, they had an appreciation for the game. Then you have some kids come on now and don't know, like, a top five player from the position that they play. Yeah. He could be a wide receiver. He's never heard of Terrell Owens. Yeah, yeah. And it's just something like, like that, like Ocho Cinco or like a big name like that who would have been big during their childhoods. They just never tuned into football until they started high school. Yeah. It's really just all these athletes making their way into the game. And I think it's a great direction, but um, they're losing a lot of players' uh, appreciation. And I feel like you lose a lot of just newer. It's like kids, you know, your kids. I'm, I can't talk. I'm 21 years old, but like your kids going into pro sports now and just like the generational way people deal with things now. And just, I feel like just maturity wise, it's a lot different from some like old school players like Philip rivers or like the Mannings when they enter the game and just uh, one player, like he's in the MLB, but like one that's just like not on social media and he's still young enough to be, like in his prime, but he's also old enough to be like, oh, that guy's an adult, is Paul Goldschmidt. And you see the way he bats when he hits a home run, you know, he'll like be happy that he hits a home run, but he he sets the bat down, he runs the bases, scores, goes back to the bench. Uh, Or like Albert Pujols, you know, he doesn't do any flashy bat flips when in his prime, he just hit Yeah, just kind of a guy who, they they score because that's the point of the game. They don't do it because they want to, insult the opponent or yeah, they're just humble anything like that they don't want to rub it in they're scoring because that's how you win like a guy like Barry Sanders um I remember his all-time celebration it like it it became a celebration yeah. to do the Barry Sanders um yeah. hand the ball off to the ref after the play where you just be respectful 
turn to the ref, you walk over to him, give him the ball, and walk back to the huddle. That's how I was raised, honestly. And when I yeah, that's football. how that's how a lot of people learned how to how to play the game of football. But there's a lot of kids now that aren't starting um, until high school when it's these high school coaches who are coaching because um, like it's their job and everything like that. But back when you were playing, when you were a kid, it was just because people's parents were football fans. Yeah. Just wanted you to go out and appreciate the game and have fun and didn't want you to intentionally hurt another player because that's bad for the game. Oh, Obviously, it is, like yeah. it's bad for, to make a child, like let a child hurt another child. But like overall, it's just bad for the sport of football. When you look at what happened with the Browns and um, Al Scarrett, oh, it was. Yeah. Well, although it was entertaining to watch, I probably watched that video <laughs> oh, more than anybody. So entertaining. Um, it was bad for the game of football. You don't want football players, you know, going back to that stuff where somebody bumps into your shoulder, like they bump your shoulder pad and you start a brawl. It's just not worth it. And it makes the game of football go back to what everybody thought that football players were just dumb, stupid people who jumped on top of each other in a pile if there was a ball there. Yeah. And the fact that, like, Miles Garrett hit Mason Rudolph with a helmet. Like, if you weren't in the game of football and under, like, NFL investigation... It would have been, like, an attempted murder charge or something like that. Yeah, that's an assault. Like, illegally an assault with... With a weapon. With a weapon. I don't know. Not a deadly weapon. It'd be an assault with a non-lethal weapon. But, like, you still could have caused damage. that's like hitting somebody with a rock. Yeah, like, you don't do that. And, like, he could have pressed charges still. I think he could have, but did he choose not to? I don't know. But... Anyways, let I don't know. There's just tons. I just, I don't know. That's um, why I love talking football. You can go on forever about anything. Really can. Um, I love talking one of anything. Things I was I was hoping to talk to you about was uh-huh. uh, one of the things I was hoping to talk about was um I was just wondering what were your favorite picks out of the draft that just happened the 2020 draft um Ooh. just occurred and why. Okay, this is tough. Basically, just you know best fit or skill set or anything like that. Um, element kind of your favorite picks this is tough because i'm a hardcore packers fan and i was so mad at their draft they could have taken patrick queen and they didn't Patrick Queen was a great player um i i know he's gonna be great i know it and i i said the same thing a couple years ago when the chargers drafted desmond king the packers passed on desmond king and drafted kevin king the cornerback who's always freaking hurt He's remember that plays, but he's situation. I just it's like I feel like I don't want to like toot my own horn, but I feel like I know talent when I see it, and I'm like that guy's gonna be a baller, and I know it, and I'm usually right about those things, and I knew that about Desmond King, and I was so mad when they took Kevin King, and they could have had Desmond King, they could have had Patrick Queen, and I think he's gonna do amazing things for um, Baltimore, and I think um, that was the steal because he I feel like he just kind of slipped. Well, it was an absolute steal by the Ravens. Um, I believe they picked up yeah. A.K. Dobbins, too. Great draft class for them. Well, yeah, um, yeah. Dobbins was great, too. Especially with that new offense they're trying to start up. And it seems like they're really trying to revolutionize like how quarterbacks are played with Lamar Jackson. So I think Dobbins is a great pickup for that because he's such a versatile player. He can really do anything you need him to on offense. Yeah, they're, um, they're going to be great for uh, a while. Yeah. Uh, personally, I think... Uh, one of the biggest sleepers in the draft would have to be Brandon Ayuk went to San Francisco. Is that the wide receiver? Yeah. yeah um, he's good. Absolutely great player. He had a wide frame. Um, I think it's six or seven inches uh, wider than he is tall. And Holy crap. <laughs> he, does, he has like a 6'4 frame, 5'10 or 5'11, I think. Um, that's how tall he is. But... You know, he doesn't really show a lot when he's just running his routes. He's not a great route runner. He doesn't have amazing speed. He can't, um, you know, go up like Randy Moss or Julio Jones and catch the ball over some of these guys or get some incredible sideline catches. But um, a lot like we were talking about with George Kittle, he has some of the best rack ability I've seen coming out of the draft. He can really just pick the ball out of the air and run. Like, once he gets the ball in his hands in open field, you can't stop him. And he's really going to be a problem for people to shut down. And I love how he's going to fit into the West Coast scheme. Now, you know, now it's a lot about like how flashy you are. And I feel like OBJ was kind of like a start of how flashy you can be as a, as a wide receiver. OBJ was probably the start of players being overrated. An era. He was like the beginning of an era with that one handed catch. But my thing is, is like, I don't, 
I want a guy I can rely on who's just going to catch the ball first. And that that br- brings me back to days like wide receivers like Wes Welker. Um, just Absolutely players you know are just yeah. going to catch it. And like DeAndre Hopkins, I think, is the current current time – you know, reliable, Mr. Reliable with the hands because he can catch. Yeah, I would have to go with either DeAndre Hopkins or um, Leo Jones, of course, being uh, yeah, probably Leo's the best wide receiver in the football, in the entire league right now. Yeah. And um, I think uh, the thing is, is like D Hop's only had like, I don't know, isn't it like less than 10 uh, drops in his entire career or something like that? Like, yeah, it was something like that. But um, for the past season, he had a lot. He had more than ever in his career oh did he really yeah i don't really know how he's gonna do with that drop in production um but he's also going to arizona now and i really like him in that scheme with kyler murray he says that he thinks he's gonna have the best year of his career yeah i saw that i, I trust the guy especially yeah. with how kyler murray can play and sling the ball on the run and you got a um, vet like larry fitzgerald to like coach you and like just talk well, to yeah. you every single day I would, be I would love to be in that room with Tyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, and Larry Fitzgerald. That would just be absolutely incredible because you have Larry Fitzgerald, the um, you know hardworking blue collar wide receiver with nothing but respect and knowledge and loyalty yeah, for the game, and he's going to pass that. All he likes to do is give. He has you know been nominated for Walter Payton Man of the Year. I don't know how many times he's won it, but probably several. Um, he's a great person and. You know, he's probably one of the only people university, universally that people can say have won a Super Bowl. Like you look at guys like Matt Ryan, you look at guys like um, I think now uh, Randy Moss, who were robbed of a Super Bowl, and like <laughs> really Larry Fitzgerald, I think deserves it more than anybody. Yeah, he's a he's, been he's the just ideal a workhorse player. He's a very classy guy. I respect. Larry he's been Fitzgerald. he's been with the franchise through. Absolutely everything, you know, when they have like a number three overall pick or back in 2015 when the Panthers went 15-1, and one, the Cardinals went 14-2 and two in the NFC Championship, they were which is overshadowed like by a lot of like three straight years with Carson Palmer. They were like... Absolutely incredible. Yeah, they, um, they were really great. overshadowed by every other team in the league, though, because every other team was just doing something big, too. You know, yeah, you I had remember. the... Go ahead. Um... Okay, yeah. Um, so when the Panthers, like when they went undefeated, that really overshadowed every other person, um, every other team that was kind of blowing up at the time. And really, the only thing that I focused on with the Panthers was when they got beat by Atlanta. Because how do you get beat by Atlanta after pulling them out, shutting them out the first game, and then they come back and won, I think, 28 4? I watched that game, um, but I'm not too sure about what the score was. But really, like, mm-hmm. you. Look at the Cardinals and teams like the Cardinals who are really to showcase loyalty and respect on their teams. Like they just never seem to get it done, even though they deserve it more than any other team in the league. Yeah. And that's um I think I really like the Cardinals and DeAndre Hopkins and Kenyon Drake and Fitz. And then they have also got Christian Kirk. Is that is that his name? Yeah, Christian Kirk. Is it um, Christian Kirk or is it? Yeah, Christian Kirk at wide receiver. I think okay. he came out of Texas A and M. Yeah, he he was great at Texas A and M. I feel like he was in college forever though for some reason. Yeah, he was a great player. Yeah, he was um, great at A and M. They're gonna have a stud offense. Picked up Isaiah Simmons too, who's gonna be great. Um, oh yeah, being able to move around that defense. Mm. Chandler Jones and Patrick Peterson to lock down whatever side he's not on. Chandler once he develops, Chandler he's gonna be aging, able to though, he is aging pretty fast, but I think he still has one or two good years left in him. Um, he's about thirty-one, but I wouldn't be on that let on see. how old he is. Let me Google it. Maybe I'm thinking of. I think I'm. I might be getting him mixed up with Calais Campbell. Chandler Jones is thirty years old, so that's okay. Yeah, he's still got a couple prime years left. I was getting yeah. him confused with Calais Campbell, who is. He's about 33, I think. Yeah, he's like 33, 34, 33 years old. And I th- wasn't I, he on the Cardinals? He was on the Cardinals. He oh, okay. went to Jacksonville when that defense was um, being built up, and I already thought he was too old for that defense. But it really did show that he belonged there when, like, as soon as he got there, he made an impact on uh, the whole line and the yeah, pass rush. So. That's who I got it mixed up with was Calais. 
but okay. But back to, um, oh no, sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. You're good. Okay. Um, uh, just back to, uh, Arizona for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, or not Arizona, back to Jacksonville. Um, okay. I was just wondering, what did you think of pickup in the draft of Ivan Chasen? Uh, left outside linebacker out of uh, LSU. Okay, yeah. So I think anybody out of LSU for this year's draft is going to. I mean, it's a great pick overall. I think anybody else in the SEC, if you pick anyone in the SEC, is going to be a good pick because they know how to play with big boys. They know how to play competitively. Oh, yeah, um, it's like another league in the SEC. It really is. But I'm going to be honest, I wasn't. I did not know last year's draft as good as I knew previous years. Like they said, last year was the biggest wide receiver draft class in years, like a decade. And I didn't yeah. know, hardly know any of them because I didn't, I don't know what happened last year. Maybe I just was busy with work or something, but I didn't watch a lot of college football. Like I feel like I, I'm an Arkansas fan because I live in Arkansas. So I didn't get to watch a lot of their games and I didn't want to watch a lot of their games. So <laughs> Like, I just didn't really pay attention to college football that much last year. I just kind of kept up with, like, the hype of LSU and, you know, Alabama to oh, yeah, the Burrow. Joe, Joe Burrow storyline. Yeah, like um, the big shots. I was captivated with. Yeah. So I knew about them, but I didn't know much about, like, the, the wide receivers or really any other player in the draft. But I knew, like, players like Patrick Queen, and uh, they had, like, a cornerback taken, too, I think. But... There were several um, players I knew, but not really familiar with all of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Christian Fulton was also taken. I wanted Atlanta to draft them really bad being um, a Falcons fan. I wanted, um, uh, was Arden Key, he was from LSU, was he in this year's draft or last year's? Oh my god. Um, Do you know who I'm talking about? LSU. Yeah. I think he was in last year's draft. Now I wanted the Packers to take him too because I think he's going to be a great player when he gets the opportunity. Like the, he, he's one of those guys where I just like I know it's going to be a baller, and I think I see that in Key, but I don't think he's gotten the opportunity to play yet. Where is he at? I think he was drafted a year or two ago. Um, he was defensive end for the Las Vegas Raiders. Ah, oh, okay. He's twenty four. That explains why you haven't heard about him. Recently. Oh, he was drafted in 18. <laughs> so he's play, he played 18 and 19. Oh, so he played two years already. Wow, that's nuts. But he... Okay, well, that's weird. In 2018, he had 30 combined tackles and one sack. And then last year, he only had four combined tackles, one assist, two sacks. So I think he may have gotten hurt last year. I think that's, I think that's what's going on. But... I don't know. You were asking me about Jacksonville. I just got sidetracked. <laughs> I um, completely <laughs> forgot about Jacksonville. I don't even know what to say now. Um, Sorry, that's my. <laughs> I get. I get. I get so thrown off just talking oh, it's about all good. anything. It's it's football. That's what you got to talk. Yeah, about. I I could do um, it for days. Oh, so, um, it actually was. I believe the seventh anniversary of Adrian Peterson's rushing record, 296 yards in one game. Um, that still stands, huh? It still stands to this day. So that was the other thing I was going to ask you was, okay. um, which four players do you think have the best chance to break that record this year? To be running back, um, and then, you know, crazy. Okay, I'm going to count out, like you're – you might agree, you might not agree, but I know a lot of viewers will probably disagree. But I'm going to count out Christian McCaffrey. I'm going to count out players like um, Alvin Kamara. Definitely, he's out. Um, I'm going to count out Elliott. So those are like top three running backs. Um, there's others that I can't think of right now that I would count out, and I can justify why. Yeah, just because why. the scheme and... Yeah, because they, they catch a lot of passes like out of the backfield, you know. Yeah, that was um, – I've already compiled, like, a short list. It's just four players as well. But, um, yeah, that was that was my other thing when I put mm-hmm. on uh, the list. 
obviously guys. Um, I think the passing scheme, like I, I believe Nick Chubb could do it. That's but what I, I was gonna say Nick having, Chubb. But having Odell Beckham and having uh, Bruce Landry on the outside really is a crutch to him because it it takes so much more focus away from the running game. The team feels obligated to throw the ball. Yeah, exactly. When Nick Chubb is hot, they start to throw the ball because they know if they don't throw the ball, Odell Beckham's going to be vocal about it. Yeah, Jarvis Landry's going to talk about it. Somebody's going to bring up that they're not getting the ball when they want to get it. So they try to spread it around as much as possible. Yeah, I was going to say Nick Chubb, and I believe Saquon Barkley has. I know Saquon could do it, but I know I think that Barkley he. Could do it. I know that he won't do it. Team. Yeah. I don't think that he has the ability to do it, but just because he plays so much like Adrian Peterson, and he really is the only person on that offense who could um, a difference in the game like that. Like I don't even think I think Saquon would hit three hundred yards before Daniel Jones did. So really, he does have a great case to make there. Yeah, I just think his offense. You know, he's not going to get to two K rushing, or I'm not two K rushing. I'm sorry. I don't think he. Uh I don't know. I don't think he's got the kind of offensive line to get him to almost 300 yards a game in a game. But I know he has the talent to do it for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, um, but I, honestly, I could only really think of like Nick Chubb. Um, I don't think Aaron Jones could do it. I don't think Zeke would do it. Who Who would you write down that you thought could get to that? Um, right, so, number one, just because of what an important key PC is on the offense, okay. is Saquon Barkley. I think that he has the most potential to be able to rush for 300 yards. I don't think he's going to do it. I think with his skill set, he should be able to. Oh, yeah, he should be able to. He's definitely talented enough. There's just something about him that makes me uh, not believe um, most likely to get it. This is Derrick Henry. Especially with uh, all the touches that he gets every game. Yeah, Derek Henry. Um, I forgot about him. <laughs> yeah, it's really just the quantity of touches that he gets. Like, you know, and then he can break away for those big plays. His longest play was, I believe, 88 yards. And then um, last year he had the 98 yard rushing touchdown. That was, uh, yeah. or 99 yards. So was the also the record. Um, Alvin Cook, I believe, could get it done. He was an MVP candidate. Um, had 81 yards per game in only 14 games. So I think with uh, the production that he does get on the Vikings offense, especially Dalvin with Cook Diggs good. leaving, yeah, especially with Diggs leaving, and they had another player who went to Atlanta as a slot receiver. I can't think. Of um, yeah, he's going to see an increase in production drafting Jefferson. He's not going to get all the touches right away. So I think they're going to lean on uh, Dalvin Cook kind of as a crutch for. Jefferson while he's developing and on the island if he can't get done, if he's full covered, whatever like that. Did you uh did you step away from your mic? Uh, a little bit, hang on. Okay, sorry. Um who, and then who was the fourth player on the list was Josh Jacobs with all the touches yeah. that he gets in the Raiders offense. Um I don't think him personally as a player could get it done. But just because of the scheme and the amount of touches he gets, how productive he is, and the type of player he is, really. Um, especially in that Raiders scheme. He does do great in that scheme and flourish with those kinds of runs, all the inside zones and stuff like that. So I think Josh Jacobs would be able to get it done if they gave him the right opportunity. Yeah, I think he could, too. That was, a, that was one I forgot about. I forgot about Derrick Henry and Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs, I watched him at Alabama, and he was be, he, who was he behind? Which running back was he behind? Well, they had like a whole train of running backs going through there. Yeah, but they had like who was, who was the big guy that he was behind that was supposed to be like a stud, and he was a stud. Um, he got drafted um, before Josh Jacobs. Was it? Oh my god! Because I know J- Jacobs was like the second string. He was kind of like he. The Derrick Henry. It wasn't. No, Derrick Henry's been in the league too long. I think. He's been in there like three or four years now, hasn't he? Um, I believe so. Okay, I might have to look this up because I know Jacob <laughs> was not the starter. Oh, he wasn't the starter. I remember they had a like like a big power back starting in front of him. Let me. 
I that's totally blank right Alabama's now. Alabama's MO when looking for running Damian backs. Damian Harris Scarborough. and Bo Scarborough. Scarborough. Scarborough is Where did they go? Dirty. Where did Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough go? Can't even think about it right now. Like oh I can't. Yeah, they're um, like not existent, aren't remember, they? I remember Bo Scarborough at college was absolutely incredible player. Let me Bo uh, Scar. Let me see when Bo Scarborough got drafted. He's he got drafted to the D- Detroit Lions. Uh, he got drafted last year. And this last draft. Yeah, like um. So did Damian draft. Harris? I think Damian Harris got drafted this year too. By the by the Patriots, yeah. Yeah, they were studs though. So like they were they had amazing we're running absolute backs. Studs at, um Alabama. Alabama Alabama obviously always has that um cycle of running backs though. Yeah. You know, they had um I'm trying to think about it right now. Mark Ingram's the only one that can really come to mind. Um They had Eddie Lacey, Mark Ingram, they had oh my God. Derek Henry, T J Yeldon. TJ Yeldon and Lacey, people have really forgotten about them, but TJ Yeldon was an absolute force when he was at. Oh my god, he was. Alabama. I remember he had so much elusiveness for such a powerful run game that when they would hand him the ball, they'd have running backs breaking down and tackle him, and he would just hit him with a quick sidestep, and they weren't ready for it, and it was over. He was so good. I loved watching. It was him. incredible. I, I remember there. he played high quarterback in high school too, and they let him throw the ball at Alabama and. Amazing at throwing the ball too. He was one of the best quarterbacks, um, or not one of the best quarterbacks. He was one of the best players I've seen just in general who um, have had to throw like flea flickers and stuff like that. Yeah, he was. Alabama just always has fun running backs to watch. Oh yeah, They're, absolutely. They just draft studs at running back. Um. Yeah, I know there's so much to talk about, but we've had about a 40 minute podcast, and that is a uh, that's a good episode for me. Um, right. If you're interested, man, I'd love to have you back on, especially with your other account runner, your, yeah, your other sure. admin who couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately. Um, but guys, if anyone's watching, please go fo- follow the Sports Palace on Instagram. There's a period in between e- each word, so it's the dot sports dot palace. Um, I have it on the screen as well. So go check them out, give them a follow, they're up and coming, and hope to have them on some future podcasts. Um, do you have any final words or final questions for me? Uh, no, not really, just, you know, thanks for having me on, it was a, a great conversation, you know, obviously 40 minutes talking about football. Oh, it flies by, there. I could do this for yeah. a living. Yeah. Um, no problem, man, and I'll send you the link when I post this on YouTube. It'll probably be up tonight, hopefully, if it uh, renders quick enough. But Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I'll send you the link, and um, just keep in touch with me, because I'll for sure do this again. Yeah, for sure, no problem. All right, later, man. Yep. All right, guys, thanks for watching the podcast. Um, remember to like, subscribe, and then Push the bell for the uh, notifications when I go live, when I post new videos. Check out all the social media, Twitter, Instagram. I also have a Twitch now. It's not on the screen, but it's twitch.com slash NFL broadcaster. Don't have a streaming schedule yet, just with life going on. But um, Instagram, Twitter, very active, very active on YouTube. I post Mondays and Fridays. Mondays and Fridays on YouTube, guys. Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in Friday's video.